Deer Creek Audio, your trusted technical resource. After using key measurements to verify all basic system functions, it's important to optimize your speaker and subwoofer performance using delay settings. Aligning the time of arrival of the audio signals from the full range speakers and subwoofers improves system coherence. In this video, we will explore two methods for completing the time alignment process, physical delay using a 4 subwoofer home theater system, and electronic delay using a 2.2 stereo configuration. Both methods capitalize on the advanced technology of many DSP products. There are two basic approaches for time alignment of all speakers and subwoofers within a group. Physical delay measurement and electronic delay measurement. The first and simplest method uses physical distance measurements. Using physical measurements to determine the delay from the various subwoofers to the listening position, assumes that all subwoofers are of the same design, and have equivalent DSP latency. Our example for this video shows a mini DSP 2x4 HD, driving four subwoofers in a home theater system. Since everything is done with a tape measure and no electronic measurements, a full-range timing reference speaker is not necessary. This diagram depicts the physical layout and center position for making measurements. This example is for a home theater setup with four subwoofers, which will be delay corrected prior to being connected to the audio video receiver, or AVR. Let's walk through a typical workflow for physical delay measurement. First, measure the distance of each subwoofer from the central listening area. Next, you want to calculate the difference in distance of each subwoofer from the farthest subwoofer in feet. Now, you can find the delay in milliseconds by dividing the distance in feet by 1.11, which is the rate at which sound travels in feet per millisecond. Ensure you complete these delay calculations for each subwoofer in your system. This spreadsheet shows the delays calculated for our example. Once you have calculated the delays that need to be added to each of the subwoofers, you will insert the figures in the delay row of the mini DSP device console. Keep in mind that the closer the subwoofer, the more delay will be added. This ensures that all of the subwoofers are equal to the delay of the subwoofer that is farthest away. Now that you have inserted your delay measurements into the device console, you will complete your crossover and relative level settings, and then move on to either your REW or Dirac live room correction project. With your subwoofer system now optimized, you can connect it to your AVR and calibrate the entire system using Odyssey, ARC, YPAO, Dirac, etc. The second approach uses Room EQ Wizard, or REW, to calculate the delays electronically. This is the most accurate method for ensuring the acoustic wavefronts of all speakers are coincident with the listening area. As you proceed, be sure to check your work and verify it with physical measurements. An advantage of using an acoustic timing reference signal to electronically measure delays is that it accounts for the effects of many variables, including systems with various types of subwoofers and or full-range speakers, inline digital signal processing, and any wireless interfaces. This diagram depicts the physical layout and center listening position for making typical measurements. This example is for a 2.2 stereo system setup. Electronic delay measurements will be performed with all crossover and equalizer settings set to off or bypass. This ensures the most accurate delay measurements. Be sure to save your XML configuration files prior to bypassing and removing the crossover settings. Once you have completed all measurements and are satisfied with your delay settings, you can reinstall your basic device console XML configurations. An acoustic timing reference signal allows you to electronically measure the relative delays between the four speakers in a 2.2 system. The first step is to determine which of the speakers is closest to the listening area. Keep in mind that speakers with additional digital signal processing, such as subwoofers with DSP or wireless interfaces, can have significantly greater delay. 
it's required that the test signals have sufficient bandwidth, preferably at least 250 Hz. In order to achieve this, you need to turn off all crossovers, or ensure they are set to their maximum frequency. The greater frequency range you can get out of the subwoofers, the more accurate the measurements. On the REW Preferences page, set the timing reference output to the left channel and set the speaker output, which should be the delay measurement signal, to the right channel. This corresponds to channels 1 and 2 on the device console. Before making actual delay measurements from the listening position, start out with the microphone near the acoustic timing reference output, in this case, the left main speaker. Next, make measurements of all the other speakers and subwoofers in the system that are farther from this point. You should be able to confirm with a tape measure that your electronic measurements are true. With the mute and routing matrix functions of the device console, you can select which speaker or subwoofer is being measured for delay. In this first example, the leftmost main speaker, our acoustic timing reference, is generating both the timing reference signal on the left channel and the delay measurement signal on the right channel. The expectation is for this number to be close to zero, as the signals are coincident. In the first measurement shown here, the device console shows the timing reference signal and delay measurement signal coming from the left main speaker. In the second measurement shown here, the device console shows the timing reference signal coming from the left main speaker and the delay measurement signal coming from the right main speaker. Once you have completed the delay measurements of the remaining speakers and subwoofers, the resulting REW display will have all of the delays listed on the left. Once all of your delay measurements are complete, transfer them from the REW page into a spreadsheet. You can then determine which speaker or subwoofer is the farthest away, both physically and electronically, by identifying the largest delay value, which is the right subwoofer in our example. In your spreadsheet, subtract the largest delay value, which is 6.1 milliseconds in our example, from all of the other delay measurements. See the last row of this spreadsheet for our example. After completing your calculations, the resulting delay figures will be added as positive numbers in the device console delay settings row, highlighted in red here. You should now have time-aligned all of the speakers and subwoofers in your system to the center listening area. You can verify this by going through and repeating all of the delay measurements. You should expect to see variances of a few milliseconds or less. Now that you have inserted your delay measurements into the device console, you will complete or reinstall your crossover and relative level settings. It's now time to move on to either your REW or Dirac Live Room Correction Project.